Time for our next question from Angie in Springdale. And she writes, I recently found out that I've got a net worth of about $4 million, which feels pretty good, if I'm honest. Pretty good. Yeah, I'd say so, Angie. But I'm 60, and I don't really know how that plays into retirement, if it does. What are your thoughts? What do I need to know? Well, Angie, let's uh, talk first up about what you mean by net worth. And and we're not suggesting you're confused over that by any means, but this will be helpful for other people. Net worth versus liquid net worth, right? There, yep. there is a difference. And when it comes to retirement, you can't spend the non-liquid, the illiquid net worth. Scott, if I own the building that we're in right now, I would have a very high net worth. But unless I could figure out a way to draw income from the building, and maybe I could from rent or something of that nature, then I don't have a lot of liquidity. And so that's the difference that we're talking about here, net worth versus liquid net worth. In our book that we wrote several years ago called Your Retirement Should Be More, we talked about the fact that if somebody, you know, just walked out of their back uh, into their backyard one night and suddenly this meteorite of gold had had plopped down in their yard, they would be wealthy, but they might have problems buying breakfast the next morning because they don't have any cash. And so that's that's really where this turns into. And uh, so, Angie, congratulations, you got a $4 million net worth. That's fabulous. That's great. But you've got to think about liquidity. You've got to think about how do you turn that net worth into liquid assets that you can spend for retirement. And so I think that that is a a real problem that a lot of people had. And it goes right back to the uh, statement that we said earlier on the show, uh, Scott, that that retirement is not an asset problem. It is an income problem. So I think that's where uh, Angie should be focused right off the bat. Yeah. And there's all kinds of ways we can go with this. We don't really know how her $4 million is uh, allocated at all. Some of that illiquid, if she has illiquid assets, could be income producing, right? It could be a rental house. It could be commercial real estate. It could be farmland. And that could be included in someone's retirement income plan for sure. But I think the other part of that goes to, and we have clients uh, who we worked with over the last couple of years, can't tell you, there's probably half a dozen of them at least, that they did uh, receive a lot of income that way. And that was their job to be able to rent houses. But then you have some maintenance, right? And as you get older, do you want to keep maintaining that? Do you want to pay somebody to maintain that, which cuts into your overall income uh, as well, your profits? And what we've found is that by the time that people are into their 60s, they're looking for a way out, at least partially, maybe not completely, but they're looking to divest themselves of at least some of those properties, some of that land so that they don't have to work so hard and can really experience financial independence. So that's something to think about. And I think it's good that you plan for that if she's 60 and she wants to actually start receiving uh, her retirement income and not work at at 65. That's a great time to start doing it because you got to allow time to be able to divest of some of those illiquid assets. Angie, here's an easy way to think about this. Very easy way. Retirement is like needing to replace a paycheck. And if you think about what you really like about your paycheck is it's very uh, predictable. It's going to hit the bank account, I don't know, every two weeks or uh, twice a month or whatever the sequence is. You're going to get that paycheck on a regular, consistent basis. You like the consistency. And it's likely to grow over time because people give raises. And and so you've got to think about that in the context of retirement and how you can actually take those assets, turn them into liquid assets, and also turn them into assets that are going to grow over time to provide additional income so you can offset inflation. I think you also have to think about if you're going to liquidate assets, you've got to think about what are the tax ramifications of that. We were just talking about taxes. That needs to be a consideration. It doesn't need to be the whole reason you do something or don't do something, but you've got to think about that. And you have to also think about the valuation of those assets. It's now a good time to liquidate it? Is it can it is it something that can be liquidated over time to spread out the impact of the valuation to spread out the impact of taxes? So there's a lot of questions that have to be answered. I think it would be really good for Angie to sit down with an advisor and work through the complexities of having what is essentially a great problem a $4 million net worth, but how do you make that net worth work for you in terms of income in retirement? If uh, you're like Angie and you're looking to solve some of those same questions or answer some of those same questions, you can always sit down with a Gen Wealth Financial Advisor. All you have to do is call 866-653-PLAN. That's 866-653-7526. 
and set up an appointment. We've got offices all over the state of Arkansas and in northwest Louisiana.